Welcome to our mock technical drawing for mechanical engineering. Let's start with module 2, unit 2. Module 2, remember, is frequently used standard parts, unit 2, bearings and circlips. Okay, in unit 2 we are going to talk about bearings and circlips. A bearing is a machine element that reduces friction between moving parts. So we have the hub, we have the shaft, and we have the bearing between hub and shaft. There are many kinds of bearings. One of the most commonly used is a ball bearing. Here we have the inner ring, we have the outer ring, we have the cage, and we have the balls which are the rolling elements. In this case, they are spheres. There are also tapper bearings and roller bearings. Either the outer ring rotates or the inner ring rotates. But it is possible that both of them rotate, in case the hub and the shaft rotate both. It is easy to recognize a bearing in an assembly drawing. If the bearing has been cut, the rolling element is represented as if it hadn't been cut, the ball or the roller. But the inner and the outer ring should be cut. That's it. They should be hatched. If the bearing is not cut, you would see it with the usual views. Bearings have standard measures. This determines the dimensions in both parts. In the hub and in the shaft. Here we have the dimensions, the diameter of the inner ring and the diameter of the outer ring. The inner diameter will be the diameter for the shaft and the outer diameter of the, be of the bearing will be the diameter of the bore in the hub. In this train of gears, we have four bearings, which are equal two by two. We have two bearings equal and other two bearings which are equal. Here we have the title block and we have the designation for the bearings. That's it, 6007 and 6006, which have a standard dimensions. Here we have 6006, dimensions are inner diameter 30, outer diameter 55 and width 13, and 6007 has inner diameter 35, outer diameter 62, width 14. So the bearings determine certain dimensions in case part number one, in input shaft part number two, and output shaft part number three. Here we have the output shaft. So the inner diameter B and the width B determine these dimensions in the output shaft. And for the other bearing, 6007, inner diameter and width determine more dimensions in the output shaft. These are the locations for the bearings in the case. And here we have the dimensions. In this case, for our case, is the external diameter D and the width B. We have here both bearings 6006 and 6007 with the corresponding diameters and dimensions. As we have seen, the external diameter D, the internal diameter D and the width B of the bearing determine dimensions in some parts of our assembly. 
circlips. A circlip is a type of fastener consisting of a semi-flexible metal ring with open ends and prevents lateral movement. There are two types, internal and external, referring to whether they are fitted into a bore or over a shaft. Here we have the image of an internal circlip and an image of an external circlip. An external circlip is frequently used to prevent lateral movement of internal bearing rings. So the shaft must have a groove for the bearing and fixes lateral movement of internal bearing ring. Internal circlip is frequently used to prevent lateral movement of external bearing rings. Now the bore has a groove. And you can see the circlip fixing the position of the external bearing ring. So we have here both grooves for internal circlip and for external circlip. Circlips have standard dimensions. The needed groove has also standard dimensions. You can see here the standards. For external circlip is DIN 471 and for internal circlip is DIN 472. In the previous train of gears there are several circlips. We can see here an internal circlip and we can see here an external circlip. You can see in this case that circlip fixes axial position of the gear wheel, not of a bearing. In the title block we can see the designation for the four circlips. We have our bearing with the dimensions external diameter and internal diameter. In this case internal is 30, external is 55. And see the designation. See that for the external circlip the designation is 30 as the internal diameter of the bearing. And for our internal circlip, the designation of the circlip is the external diameter of the bearing. So now we are going to see the dimensions for the grooves. The external circlip has dimensions which are standard with 1.6 and diameter 28.6. And the internal circlip for the groove is width. 2.15 and 58. So the case and the shaft must have these grooves with these dimensions for the circlips. Here we have our case and here we have the corresponding group for the internal circlip. Here you can see the dimensions that must be in the case the groove for our internal circlip with width 2.15 and diameter 58. Now the shaft must have also a groove for the external circlip. If we see the drawing of the output shaft, we can see the groove with 
1.6 and diameter 28.6. This is the end of Unit 2, Module 2. We have been talking about bearings and circlips. So, summary, what have we learned? Bearings are frequently used in mechanical assemblies. They reduce friction between rotating parts. Bearings have standard dimensions. Inner ring, outer ring diameters and width. So bearings condition dimensions of both parts. For the shaft, the inner ring, and for the half, the diameter of the outer ring of the bearing. Circlips prevent lateral movement. There are two kinds of circlip, internal, fitted into a bore, external, over a shaft. Here we have an internal circlip, and the external circlip. Circlips have standard dimensions. Circlips condition dimensions in the needed grooves on the hub and on the shaft. We have here both kinds of grooves, in the bore and in the shaft. The bore is for internal circlip, the shaft for external circlip. After our summary, we will be waiting for you in our unit 3.